Hello Linux fans, Rob here. Welcome to Linux Quest and another episode of Cool Linux Tools. So in this particular uh, episode, I'm going to feature a tool slash program called Shutter. But before I get into that, I just want to tell you all thank you very much for your participation, uh, for your positive feedback, for your encouragement. Linux Quest has surpassed the 2,000 subscriber mark, and that would have never happened without you, the community. Um, you've, you've helped other viewers. Uh, you've provided great tips and feedback, and it's just grown to become a very, very positive thing. So I truly, truly appreciate you. All right, with that said, let's jump in here to Shutter. Uh, so Shutter is the featured tool slash application. And I picked Shutter for various reasons. Uh, back in the Windows 7 days when uh, the snipping tool came on the scene, that was a tool in Windows that I used much more than I ever expected that I would. So one of the first things I looked for when I made the complete and total switch over to Linux was a good screenshot slash screen clipping tool. Now, uh, with Ubuntu or GNOME, uh, you have a default screenshot tool that works very well. You also have within KDE Spectacle, which works very well, very simple and easy to use. And those come by default. I really like Shutter because it can be just a simple tool to capture your entire desktop or to capture a section. And we'll get into that here in just a second. But it's also very powerful if you want it to be in several ways. And so I'll point that out as well. All right, so uh, this particular version of Shutter is 093.1. Now, here you have a row of icons, and so most people are going to gravitate to those icons um, for quick access. And here you have a redo last screenshot. Here you can, and again, you hover and you get a pop up. You can draw a rectangle to capture the area that you select with your mouse. Here you can take a screenshot of the whole desktop. Here you can select a window with your mouse, so if you have multiple uh, windows you could go in and select from there. You can capture only a section of the window that you've chosen um, and you can select any child window by moving the mouse over it and again we'll we'll get through all of these different features. You can select a single menu or cascading menus from any application and then we have some that are grayed out here and that is because one I don't have the GNOME web photo uh, portion installed but we could uh, use that feature if it were installed. Uh, and here is a built-in editor. Now that is a big part of why I really like Shutter, and we'll kind of get into that as well. Um, it, it's got some really great features built right into it. And then here, if uh, we were had an image selected, and we'll get into this, you could upload your images to various image hosting services. Now I haven't used this myself. Um, I save all of my images and back everything up um, through Google Drive, but uh, you have the option of going in and setting this up. So we'll take a quick look at that. Now before we do, I just want to quickly go through some of the preferences. And you're going to see more preferences here than you do in a typical screenshot uh, tool. So under Main, you can go in and adjust the image format. So that could be PNG, BMP, or JPEG, as well as the compression. And uh, I like here having an option under the Save feature, so I could browse for uh, the folder that I want to save to every time. I could choose not to save automatically, or as I did here, I went in and set up to automatically save the file in my Pictures folder. And then you have some options here for your clipboard, where you'd like to save that to the clipboard or not. Again, quickly want to go through this. So you can, under Advanced, you can enable a Zoom window, Show or Not Show the Help Text. Now, under Window Capture, you can include window decoration when capturing a window, and we'll see that when we go through the process. You can all automatically resize the window to whatever you select or force rounded corners. Uh, so when you make the selection, you would have rounded corners uh, or select only visible windows. You can also set up some delay, and I'll show you where that comes in handy. Uh, under Actions, you can go in and choose to open with as soon as you create the capture, you could open that with the built-in editor if you choose, or to automatically reduce the colors. And you can adjust your uh, th thumbnail size as well as the uh, border. Under Image View, you can, uh, <clears throat> you can choose to show a pattern wherever there is transparency, or go in and set up a custom color or background. And then under Behavior, you can start Shutter at Login or hide the window at Launch. 
Again, I want to quickly move some through some of these options, but I'm pointing all of these out to you because you start to see that this is much more than just a simple, quick and easy screenshot tool. It, uh, it can be powerful depending on how you set it up. Now here is where you can go in to set up your various accounts. Uh, you can set up the FTP info here, connection, username, password. You see Dropbox here, TwitPic. Some of these I'm not familiar with. Imager, of course. And again, I don't use these tools. I'm not really going to go through that, but I did want you to know that it is available. And there's also quite a nice selection of plugins. And I haven't, I don't really use the plugins. Um, you know, Watermark, I may use at some point. Uh, Resize, uh, that's something that I would use. But uh, I would say that there are many more plugins that you could research and find uh, to add here. So you start to see the picture here that this is, is, this is really more than just a, a quick and simple uh, screenshot tool. All right, well, let's go ahead and go through the process. So I'm going to go ahead and choose um, a screenshot or a portion of my desktop here by selecting a, a rectangled area. So we're going to go in and capture just this section. Now you'll notice there's going to be a little bit of pause after I hit enter. All right, so now that we have our screenshot selected, you've got some options that weren't available before. So we can use the built-in editor to highlight, and we'll get into that here in just a second. Or I could go ahead and upload that shot to one of my selected um, hosting sites. So what I want to do now is just quickly show you some of the editing fe features. And for the sake of time, again, I'm not going to go into all of the details that are available in this tool. I just want you to see some of the main features and where it's different and why it's such a very good tool. All right, so now we're in edit mode and you'll notice how quickly it moved over to edit mode. So under edit mode, you've got a select uh, area. So you could go in, excuse me, select tool where you could go in and select and move up to various areas. If you wanted to highlight something in particular in the image that you took a shot of, you could draw freehand around that image. Now you've got options down here. You can go in and you can change the color, the line width, that kind of thing, uh, the fill color. You also have options for a highlighter. So let's say, let me go back to the move tool and let's say I wanted to highlight something in particular in the image. I can do that here. And we could go in and make adjustments to that highlight color. For example, if we wanted that to be a different color, uh, we could choose in this case green. You can also draw lines. You can also create arrows. So if you wanted to point to something in particular, and again, you have um, options here to adjust width, color, so on and so forth. Now, here's some other features. Let's say there's an, a section that I wanted to highlight, uh, but still make it visible. You have a transparent window where you can highlight with color. And again, you've got all the adjustments down here and options. Uh, that could be a circle as well. Now here is one that I would use or could see myself using. Actually, I, I use this, but I could see myself using this more actually. Um, and that is text tools. So here I can go in and select my text, uh, text style, uh, text family, as well as text size. And I'm going to go in and choose a color for that. And so now we have new text. Let me go in and increase that size. And so now we can edit that. And so here you see that. Well, I meant to do it over here, created another one. But again, you get the idea. Now, I really like this feature as well. I can go in and I can censor areas of the clip. So perhaps I don't want to show this particular uh, icon here. I can go in and censor that. And then I have the option to go in and crop that. So I could say, all right, I just want to show this portion. And now we have edited um, our screen clip and we're showing what we want to show, highlighting what we want to highlight. Um, so this is, to me, this is what puts shutter over the top from the other default screen clip tools. So I wanted to make sure you were aware that this was built in, how quick and easy it is to use. Um, I just I just think they've done a terrific job here. It takes it beyond really any other screen clip tool that I've ever found or used in Windows. 
um, and and I believe also uh, it's it's better than anything available right now in Linux uh, that I have tried. So if you've got other applications there that uh, that you have used for uh, you know capturing your desktop or uh, clipping your screen we're not going to save that please share those in the uh, video comments now I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna close this window and we're gonna quickly move over to take a screenshot of your whole desktop you'll notice a slight pause and that pause is basically uh, the application is going through and capturing your entire uh, desktop so everything you have going on there is captured as soon as you click that icon. Now we've also got another option here and that is select a window with your mouse. So I happen to be, you know, I only have one desktop set up. So if I go in and select that, it's going to create the same, it's essentially the same screenshot. That's because I only had that one window open. Um, now this particular tool, uh, ba -ba -ba, that captures a section. I'm going to skip that for now just for the sake of time. I want to showcase this. So the screenshot's going to happen here and it gives me time. You see there's a countdown. It gives me time to open a particular window before the screenshot actually occurs. And you'll see now that I was able with the countdown and you can adjust the countdown I was able to go in and open various windows before it took action to take the screenshot. So I'm going to wrap this up just for the sake of time. There's more that we could get into here, but I don't want these to really run on too long. Um, if you are um, you know, satisfied with what you're using now, what is default, um, by all means, keep using that. But if you're looking for something that gives you the ability to go in and edit and some more options such as we just saw here, the ability to go in and launch windows and things with the countdown timer and the ability to select various virtual windows that you have or desktops that you have open, as well as the ability to upload to uh, you know an image host and that kind of thing, then certainly give Shutter a try. Highly recommend it. I think it's an app that is extremely well done. All right, hope that helps, and we will catch you later.